Canada's oil and gas sector is struggling. Domestic and international energy companies have either closed, relocated, or limited their presence in this country over the past few months, taking tens of thousands of jobs with them. Joining us this morning is Marla Orenstein. She's the director of the Natural Resources Centre at the Canada West Foundation. Good to have you with us this morning. Thank you so much. There are 50,000 fewer workers on the oil patch today compared with just five years ago. Uh, we've heard about longtime companies like Encana most recently planning to relocate. Mm -hmm. Why are others closing entirely and what forces are driving uh, these decisions? Great question. Well, that drop in jobs is something that's really affected this province and all of Western Canada. I think it's fair to say that there's probably no family in Alberta that hasn't been affected by this very strongly over the last five years or so. Um, times are changing and th there's a lot of different reasons that, that this has come to pass. Some of these are global, drops in global oil prices. Um, these types of, of uh, problems are not just being seen in Canada. We're seeing them in Texas. We're seeing them in Norway. It, it's been around the world. Other problems may be a little bit more Canadian. The environment in which these companies are operating is influenced both by what's happening abroad and what's happening at home. Uh, we know that Justin Trudeau and the Liberals are blamed by many in Western Canada for the problems uh, they're experiencing in the mm -hmm. oil sector. You know, the party will re respond by saying we purchased the Trans Mountain Pipeline. How much can Ottawa really do to solve this problem? Because, because of the geopolitical issues that you have mentioned already, because of what's happening in the market globally. Yep. Uh, another really good question. Firstly, purchasing a pipeline isn't enough. You actually have to build the pipeline in order for that to be effective. And there's a lot of people who are waiting to see what's going to happen there. The, the federal government has come out very strongly in favor of its environmental policies. And that's really important to everybody across the country, in Alberta, in BC, in Nova Scotia, every place. But the government hasn't been as equally forthcoming in setting out environment, um, economic policy, in setting out an energy policy, or even in setting out a policy on Indigenous rights and title, and how that's going to interact with things like major projects. If, if we're to have any forward movement into the future, the government has to be really clear about saying it's not environment versus the economy. We, we're going to find a way to bring these two things together. And that's not hypocrisy. That's just what, what it is we expect of a government to do. They really need to set the conditions that make it clear what the rules of the game are and what they're expecting and hoping to see un unfold in the future. That's going to give the confidence for the sector to be able to move forward. You're talking about the energy sector in 2018. Uh, you know, it contributed $167 mm -hmm. billion dollars to Canada's GDP. We heard yeah. during recently during the election campaign a lot of talk of keeping Canada's oil in Canada. Is that part of the solution? <laughs> We certainly need, need our own oil. It's, it winds up being a, a little bit of a hypocrisy that we're not allowed to uh, keep the, the oil within Canada, but instead are importing massive amounts from Angola, from Saudi Arabia, from Nigeria to feed the refineries in eastern Canada. It seems that, that people are focusing very much on one aspect of what's happening domestically, the greenhouse gas emissions problem and not focusing on what it is that the sector does right, but that is lacking in a lot of other countries where there are enormous human rights problems. It's something that we really need to be able to step up and be proud of and say this is something that um, we, we value as Canadians and that we think we're doing a good job on and be able to put our money where our mouth is. Uh, Marla Orenstein, I want to thank you for joining us from Calgary this morning. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.